I think we set a bit of a you can reduce it a little bit. Yeah. Set a bit of platform on relationship is one of the most complex things in the world. So I'm not going to assume I have an answer, nor am I going to claim I'm an expert in relationships. But I've been in this human transformation field for a very long time, so I may offer some insight that might help. More than what can make a relationship work, I most probably have more expertise in how you can mess it up. <laughs> you see, one thing I want to put it out there, relationship is a bit magical, you know. It just sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And the thing is, when you find that magic, how not to mess it up? If somebody asks me why I like my wife or why I like somebody, most often I cannot tell you why. If you ask the Hindu, they say astrology, maybe, something. I just like somebody. Like I do, I paint. I've been taking art lessons and I paint. I, I, and I, my favorite painting is to paint portraits. I think there's nothing more beautiful in this world than faces. The people at the back, can you come? I feel I have to SMS some people. There's, there's a lot of Just seats fill up here. Front. This feels like an official lecture. Then I need to get paid. Lots of seats on the front. <laughs> If you make this official, how are you? Yeah. Yes, I saw Rema. Rema, how are things? There's lots of seats on the front. Or you could come and sit with me on the couch. I'm a bit lonely here. Yeah. You can sit there? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> What is it? What, what were you talking about? Relationships and magic. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I take up portrait painting. I, I'm a professional photographer. I took up photography as, as a hobby, but I took it up. One of the greatest things I love is faces. I'm in love with people. I like people. I like faces. I think there's nothing more magical than that in, on this earth. I've traveled, climbed mountains painted landscapes, but I think a face is such a beautiful thing. And I think only when you have that kind of interest in human being can you have relationships. You see, I, I'll tell you just on a broad, we are just chatting, it's not an official lecture. I see the yoga teacher here. I could use some of that, man. What was I saying? I have short-term memory loss. Painting. Okay. Nothing as beautiful as people, painting people. Like some fundamentals about... about relationship is, it is delicate. It's, it's very delicate, it's very... Subtle, very hard. I've talked to enough people who have bad relationships. People who have good relationships don't talk to you. Do you hear somebody say, come on, I need to speak to you. I just had the best time with my wife last night. No. They call you up and they have the worst time with their wives, right? So it's very delicate. So I'm not going to give you the seven steps, 18 steps, but I'm going to tell you this. Do you recognize how important relationship is? Can you confess to yourself? I think one of the secrets of relationship is in wanting somebody, we become vulnerable. We become very vulnerable. To be strong in that vulnerability. You are never as weak as when you're in love with somebody. I must tell you how I and my wife got along. I, I could never fall in love for the longest time. Just never happened. Met my wife. Why am I telling this story now? Relationships. <laughs> I'm not an expert in this now. Um, Insights. Till today, I don't know why. And I hope I'll never know why. If at all I can do something is, I pray that I don't mess it up. That I don't make a, a nonsense out of it. 
It's almost like, ah, when as I have got fourth dan black belt, everything. But when I fell in love, that was the most vulnerable time of my life. Because the other can say no. So the art of relationship is to be able to find strength in that vulnerability. And I think if you find strength in that vulnerability, there's a big chance you will not mess up your relationship because relationship get messed up because we are trying to find some security in something we can never find security he love you today how sure are you is going to continue love you tomorrow there are other models coming out every day <laughs> talking about cars man <laughs> if he is capable of loving you he is capable of loving somebody else she is capable of loving you she is capable of loving somebody else this is the vulnerability like the other day we were discussing oh dear, okay the other day we were discussing and i said something i said that i kind of like it sometimes it happens when i say something i like i said never attempt to make the person who you are in love happy don't try to make them happy resign yourself from that job but if you can be the happiest thing that has happened to them see the twist trying to make them happy is you are taking a job that's their job but if you become the happiest thing that has ever happened to them that is possibility so relationship is is a kind of meeting in maturity i think one of the key elements in relationship is being able to make the other comfortable so i think relationship has got few words am i comfortable what is the word comfort means i feel safe So one of the key ingredient about relationship is the experience that being with the other I feel safe. I want you to follow this very carefully it's very important. Most often in the relationship you don't feel safe. What is safety? that i am already considered is it don't confuse between romantic relationship romantic relationship is like opening the iphone box for the first time <laughs> <coughs> you get it once you cannot reduplicate it you can wrap it yourself and open it again tomorrow but it's all a silly exercise <coughs> but there is something of a romance of long term i believe only long term relationship is the most beautiful relationship and there's more to enjoy from it the beginning relationship is just freezy so i am into this long term thing you know i don't if anybody is married here you will never love your wife as much as you love her when you are older when you have been together for 50 years that love surpasses time i used to watch this and i don't know whether it, under other races i have not had a chance to see indian i've seen People have been married for 60 years they begin to look alike. That means the women have mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> There is something called uh, I think the word is biosmatic something I'm not a scientist that the cells merges. You see the word comfort and safe is when there is union. Let's touch I'm just going to fire a few rounds and then we take it from there and go into detail there is some kind of osmosis that we merge and become one like i went to study with one of my te- one of my masters my teacher i went to l- learn meditation for many years at the end people begin to say i started looking like him no no don't, don't look at my mother funny nothing happened no it's it's that that oneness so the key of relationship we said comfort then we jump to safety now we are jumping to the word being one relationship is not when you are there and i am here when we act as one and it is not just a psychological state it is a actual biological mutation this is my stand in relationship to begin to act as one if love has any merits that is what one is attempting to do when one enters love falling in love is the promise of becoming one 
Being in love is cooking to become one. When you attain to love, you are one. Like in my life, it happens perfectly. I feel like getting scolding, my wife will scold me <laughs> for not taking my medicine or for playing poker too long. For a moment, you see, is this what you seek? Does your heart seek to be one with another human being? The abuse is, I want everybody to be one with me, but I don't want to be one with everybody. Like I'll quote my, I have a singing teacher. Don't ask why I'm learning singing. I can't save myself. My teacher thinks I can sing. Now every year I try to learn one or two new things. So this year was singing the most. She will be teaching, beautiful singer she is. I used to see the husband sit there and I keep asking him, are you a singer? He said, no. And he sits there and he's like the support for his wife. That sight is love for me. Wife is teaching, he's there. He's her support. Very rare you find that, you know. Very rare you find that. That is why our sight of love is only opening the, the wrappers. We don't see the other side. So the view, the advertisement of the world is always the first meeting, the first kiss, the first on the sack and the first. And we miss the other things. I walk into my house. When my children were five years old, I was the greatest hero. They'll run, Apa! Now they say, hi, dude. <laughs> and that's a lot, like, hi, Abba. Hey, but that's love. You know why? They feel so secure, so safe, that they can even ignore me a little bit. I'm the one like... <laughs> and my wife looks at me and says, get over it, man. <laughs> Do you have eyes to see love? Ah, let's go there. I think that's a topic to get into. Can you see love around you? I have a cat. Three cats, but one thinks it owns me. It waits for me to come home. It's the only cat that wants to take a shower. Weird cat. I go to the bathroom, mew, mew. It, it wants to have a shower with me. I think one of those girl things, I think. <laughs> it's a female cat, what do you expect? But you can see it'll come sit, it'll lick you, lick me, look at me, as I'm the most beautiful thing on earth. And it happens every day, you can miss it. First of all, I want to see, can you recognize love? One of the biggest dangers in, in marriages or in relationship is, we don't see how the other love. I don't know whether you've watched this movie called Phenomena. Have you watched, am I pronouncing it right? That's my wife, she's called. Phenomena. John Travolta, it's about the psychic guy, and he will keep buying this girl's uh, chair. She will make chairs and he'll keep buying it. And finally, the girl will realize he's, he's just keeping it in the house. At the end, I think Robert Duval will say, you know why he kept buying a chair? Because a woman has to put herself somewhere. And he was buying that, that is his love. First, can you see you are being loved? Can you recognize how you love? I see love everywhere. People miss it. We are too interested in the box opening. We want that electric feeling. Oh, that's just horny, nothing else. It's nothing else, it's just anticipation. It doesn't mean anything. First, can you recognize love before even you find love? Can you recognize it in your own life, how your father loves you? Maybe he smacks you and that's his love, wrong love. You were strained in the 50s in Japanese time, what do you expect? How does your mother love you? When you demand they must love you a particular way, then you are mad. You are violating their right. So the first art, I think if I tell, want to bring a small summary, to question of relationship is, can you see how others love? Can you see how you love? Like I've got students all over the world. Every day they show gestures of love. They'll say something, they write something, they send something. 
If you don't recognize it, you miss it. Then you think this is a loveless life. Then you create a belief system out of it. It's so big, this subject. Let's go into it. We need to be loved. This is scientifically proven. Human beings need to be loved. I'm not talking about romantic love, you know. Just human beings need to be loved. If not, they, don't, they are not healthy. Something goes wrong with their system. In order to be loved, you must recognize how people love. In order to recognize that rightly, you must be able to see how you have been loved so far. That recognition, that knowing how I have been loved, will be the compass that will take you to find the person who you will love more or will love you more. You follow? If not, you've got corrupt instinct. Like I grew up with a in a, in a Malay village in Merseng, and one man took me in as a martial arts student when I was 11 years old. I was learning part one, his name. I was training with him right up to about 20s. Five, six years ago, he had a stroke. But every year I go visit him, I give him money, and kind of, I'm his pension. Poor man, but I, I love him for no reason. I was in KL, so when I go back, I go see him. First thing I do, say hello and go, go to him. He had a stroke. In the bed, he was half unconscious. It was surprising. The first name he called was my name. At that time, my name was Ravi. My name was changed later. He kept saying, call Ravi. I didn't know that man loved me that much. I could not detect it as a child because he's very stern. Make sure you, you train and you'll correct me. And he's always rough with me. I didn't know. I missed but I kind of felt it, that's why I stayed with him all throughout the year. But I think he knew I loved him. You see, our life must be written as a love story, not as a financial success story or the greatest conqueror on earth. It has to be a love story. And now, when you can recognize love, how others love, when you recognize how you love, this recognition will increase your ability to be with one another, more so with the person the magic has happened. Scientists are saying, that I was reading something, scientists say, you know how we choose mate? By how they smell. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I think dogs got it right. <laughs> it's not how you look, it's not your shape, how we smell. They say there's some kind of bio thing that we are choosing the right mate. Maybe it's all working, I don't know. Smell? Pheromone. Pheromone. If you make people make decisions, I tell you a joke, a bit crude, but to serve the point about how men think. Three women wanted to marry this guy. So this guy has to choose one of them. So he said, I put a test to you. The first guy, the, the guy said, if you win $5 million with the first girl, what would you do? She said, I will invest 4.9 million, take 100,000, go on a holiday with you. The second one said, half I'll put into saving, half I'll give you, my dear. The third one said, all of it I'll give it to you, you do what you want to do with it. The man finally decided, do you know which one he married? The one that had the bigger breast. <laughs> Hey, that's men. <laughs> and that's why everybody gets confused. How? What, what am I going to do? I think we go back to the basics for today. Can I recognize I have been loved? It's a terrible accusation to humanity to say I'm not being loved. Terrible accusation. Somebody invented penicillin. Somebody invented antibiotics. That's a way of love, you know. Somebody made the road, somebody built this place. Can't you see it? The rule is very simple, no? Who has money gets more money. 
Somehow that's the law of attraction. He likes them. Who has friends has more friends. Who has more love gets more love. We walk around unloved because we narrow the definition of love. Now, can you recognize you have been loved? Because if you say you have not been loved, then you need a doctor, a psychiatrist or something to help you. You mean you're abused. I wonder you whether you see that. They say there is, when a child breastfeed, physically we see it taking the milk in, but what we can't see invisibly is drinking the mother's love into. You cannot live without that. I don't believe you can, you can even exist. So now, we have, let's say we assume we have established that fact. Love is very important. We must recognize it, we must know we are having it, we must find more of it, we must give more of it. This is established. We also know that intimate relationship is a magic. I, it's very karmic or something. You will find your mate, don't worry, it's, it happens. Sometimes very strange, I had a student here, he was going off to, to London to study, he doesn't want to get married, he wants to be an Indian monk. I laughed, I looked, because I knew, I looked at him, I said, no, 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 no. You come back, you'll be married. Mark my word, this is about 15 years ago. He went to London to study, he accidentally bumped into somebody in the library, she was a girl from Russia, the rest is Tamil story. <laughs> They've been married 15 years there in Singapore. He said, I also don't know how I did that. This is not what I wanted to do. I said, it's nothing to do with that. So I will tend to mount meeting the right person, being, being in love. That's a magical part. All we can focus is how not to mess it up. If you want to find that person, first recognize you are being loved so your radar is open. If not, you block yourself out. A lot of people say, I can't meet the person. I'm not meeting the person. There are six billion people on earth and you can't meet people. So I can't meet. I don't know what's going on. Then something, your radar is corrupt. You are saying you are not being loved and you are looking for that specific you are narrowing it. I don't think existence, I don't believe existence can create you without creating the other also. It hasn't happened in nature yet. Think on it. Now, before I move from this stage, I'm going to take five minutes break. I want you to just. Of questions. Huh? We've got lots of questions. Yeah, then we come back into questions. I want you to just sort out this. First, confess you have been loved. I'm one of the most loved person I know. Whether I love that much, I don't know. I recognize it every day. And that makes my day. That gets my soul going. Gets my being going. Makes sense of being alive. Why is it when you meet somebody you love, you say, I want to live forever? It happens to a lot of people. If you see if one of my secretaries walk into the office glowing, I know something has happened. And it's not that she has won the lottery. Something else has happened. So for the very meaning of life is born in communion with another, isn't it? Now, before we go, we will go after this. As, as deep as we can, then we make, change the arrangement of sitting a bit more. First, confess you have been loved. And if there's anybody in this room that you think has loved you, good moment to touch. Yeah. I should say thank you. Don't touch wrongly, but... <laughs> but just, just to acknowledge. You see, one of my work, I found out this thing called Friends to Mankind, is all humanity to, to be touched. 
to, to make this love real on this earth. If not, there is no way we're going to save each other. We're not going to save this planet. You know why there are people who want to destroy this planet? They've got no love in their life. They are on a suicide mission. They're on a Thanatos journey. When there is love, you want it forever. And that would be the answer. Now just take a few minutes. <laughs>